Ah, oh, today's an interesting little visit. So we're down at um, Paddington Basin, Little Venice. Coming to work on one of the little trip boats, London Water Bus. Got a, um, a seal to do at the end of the engine. Well, I think so anyway. There's oil, there's, there's black oil being leaked out of the bell housing, which is the part which surrounds the flywheel. Um, so I've got the seal. We'll, we'll pull the box off today and have a look. All right, so what tools am I gonna need? So I'm gonna pull the gearbox off. So let's get out the um, block and tackle. We really need to put these cables somewhere else. Uh, Tom, if you're watching, yeah, you know what that is, mate. I uh, I broke Tom's mirror. Well, I borrowed it when I was welding and I haven't replaced it yet, so I feel like a very naughty boy. But there we are. Right, there's me. Um, Put light on my best seat as me lifting block. There's a couple of eyes in the um, ceiling on this boat. I think I'm going to go and get set up in there first and come back for that because that's heavy. Um, just grab me call out bag. Just got all my basic stuff in it for whatever I need to do. Uh, I need to get the new seal, which is Thank you. genuine beta marine supplied part. Anyway, let's take a wander down. It's quite busy here. It's all parked on the strip here, and it's some. Um, it's the waterside calf. Make a fantastic cup of coffee. If you're passing this way, pop in if they're open. They're well worth it. Nice pound. And this is the boat we're on today, Milton. But unfortunately, the trip boats and. A lot of these cafes haven't had any business this year for obvious reasons, and now we're on another lockdown. Doesn't bode well for anybody, really. Right. There we are. I'll go grab some torches because it's a little bit dark in here. That should do. Yeah, that's got pretty much everything I need to see. Right, we can set up and put the box off. Let me know if there's anything you need. Do you want a coffee? Uh, yeah, that'd be good. Grab some Sainsbury's and get one. What do you want? Latte or? Yeah, it's latte. Sugar? No, thank you, mate. No. I'm already sweet, so. Yeah, no worries. No. Grab you that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, alright. Sugar. Most of this off anyway by the time you're back. Yeah, uh, obviously, yeah, keys in it should you need to start it. No, otherwise... obviously, yeah. Cool, cool. Okay. That's Ben. Ben, uh, Ben works for the water bus. Ben's a nice guy. Right, let's get set up here. So, just above me, up here is a. Uh, an eyelet or a shackle for hanging things off. They're quite heavy, these 280s. Uh, 260, in fact, sorry, I stand corrected. Um, so I'm going to undo all the cup links, uh, put a strap around the gearbox, and then I'll draw it back with the weight being held on a block and tackle, and then just lift it up out of the way, rest it on the back here so I can get into the, into the back of the engine, and make the next, next assessment of what to do and which one around I'm going to do things. So.
So I came to do a service on this, my first part of the quarterly visit. And what I noticed down here, let me get my head to the so you can get behind you by the light, is you can probably make out the hole in the center of the picture. It's a flywheel locking off port. So you put a threaded adapter in there and you lock off the flywheel. two straps to make it stable. Bring you down. So, with this arrangement of uh, engines, so what you've got here is your here's your drive plate, um, and these absorb torsional forces. I'll do a video on the drive plate at some point, but I won't digress into that right now. So, with this system, the idea is is that you can leave the engine in situ and run it for power should you need to, but the box or the drive unit can come off or gearbox as you like to call it, I call them drive units, but anyway. So that can come off and that's, as you can see, that's now sat out the way safely, no harm done to me or that. Um, but I need to get in behind the drive plate and I need to get in behind the flywheel. So I'm gonna have to take off this um, bell housing, um, which means I will have to now lift the back of the engine up and support it. But what I'll do is I'll simply put the, the block on the, um, move, move the, the block and tackle over to, um, to this point here put the chain down to this eyelet and just take the weight of the engine up then undo these fixings and then I can re um, extract all this um, and then I get to the flywheel and that should be all I need that should be all that I'll need to take off um, <coughs> so uh, I'll try and get you a good position but it's a bit tight on boats and it's, it's never I'm always learning where do I put the camera and what's the best position but as the gearbox is sat here doing nothing hopefully you can uh, you can see what's going on here Right, let me change my glove. I might have to go and get some out of the van. I think I've just used my last two. But I'll pause you and I'll come back in a sec. Okay, right, slightly reposition the camera just because I don't want you to miss out on anything. And God's going to get my really expensive gloves. Okay, so. I'll set up the um, block and tackle up here now. And that's now on the engine lifting um, eye. Um, what I'm going to do, I'll just put a bit of tension on it, so I'm going to undo the fixings that keep the engine supported by the back end off, so I can withdraw this bell housing adaption, then get the, the um, drive plate and then the flywheel off. I'm just looking in there, oh, that's a lot of gunge in there, a lot of rubbish. Interesting to see what, um, what's going on. Right, so... Bit of tension, it might be a bit too much, but we'll see. And we'll right, loosen it up.
behind me. Sounds like a petrol engine in there, probably a Volvo. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Because I'm listening to noises as these things go by. Brain tingling over. rubbish in here. Oh, that's thick, dusty, mucky. Yeah, I have to clean out loads of engine oil coming out here, look. Oh yeah, it's completely filled up the whole chamber in here. Uh, loads of muck. I'll get you in for a closer look in a sec. I just want to uh, Get the um, drive plate out the way. Goodness me. Quite a bad leak actually. got going on in here so this is a drive plate it's quite a soft flexible um, coupling what's going on here is that twisted up I mean weird this looks like the elements have twisted around slightly 
use. Well, that's okay. Serviceable, as they say. Right, so let's bring you in. Magnetic base. So here we go. Here's a flywheel. So flywheels is basically a solid mass. Um, you get dual mass flywheels now, but that, that's more automotive stuff. We've not, not seen those on boats yet, so I won't talk about those. But it's a solid mass of, um, of weight designed to keep the inertia of the engine running smoothly. Uh, more weight at certain points allow it to run sm smoother at lower RPM, which I think uh, Beta specify on their data page for, for the various engines they do. Um, so now I need to withdraw this big flywheel. Well, I say big, it's not very big at all really, compared to some of the engines you see around. Um, and uh, then we can have access to the, um, the seal um, housing. I think that's 17. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's 18. Oh, is that bolt from the gearbox? No, of course, 16 now. Soaking wet, interesting. to sit. I'm going to have to clean this up. A little tour together. Turn this off so you can see what's uh, what's going on. So as I suspected, um, I'm not sure that light's any good for you guys or not. Sorry if it's um, if it's bad. I don't really have any other way of lighting the area. So he here's the the end of the crank. Um, let me turn the lights slightly that way. Okay, so this is the, the smaller end. Excuse my, excuse my muttering of words at the moment. I'm uh, tired again. So this is the end of the crank. Um, there's a guide pin to keep the flywheel in the correct, correct position and, and help stop it from spinning off. Um, here's the, the seal housing. And it actually looks like the seal housing gasket's leaking at the bottom. So I bought the seal. I have liquid gasket and I've got paper gasket kit in the van if need be. So I'm going to clean all this area up, get all that crud out. Um, I'm not entirely sure what all that crud is to be honest with you. I mean oil is fine but what, what's in there must be must be parts of the um, rubber from the uh, drive plate that's come off, just come off and bonded with the oil and created a paste. So we'll get that cleaned up. Um, get the seal off the end and 
and go from there. I'm just not sure if I'm going to have to drain off all the engine oil. Um, I don't think I will. I think it's below. I think it's above the capacity line. If I do, I do. If I don't, great. Um, we'll see. Because I just put the oil in it um, last month, so but it can go back in. So. I'm gonna go back and come back in a second. I've got this can of WD, but it's okay. Really so, uh, bringing you back, where do we get to? I have to go and change battery because it didn't last that long on this. So, um, I've cleaned everything up, um, got the housing off for the seal. Um, it's the gasket is leaking. It's, it's one of those really thin little paper gaskets, which clearly hasn't worked very well for whatever reason. Um, these things do fail, so, you know. I think I'm probably going to, I don't know, actually, I'm, I'm still just on what to do, whether to put a paper one back in there or to just use some liquid gasket, which I feel more comfortable with, actually, because at least it's got some room to flex and give, if anything loosens up slightly, so it's clearly the paper one has, um, has failed to allow for any discrepancies in the torque. I imagine that the, um, the bolts that hold the gasket in have probably loosened or the aluminium casings kind of got hot, got cold, got hot, got cold and potentially expanded and slightly changed. And uh, yeah, it's hard to say really. Um, everything was tight when I did it and you could hear the pops when I broke all the torque on the fixings with the Spanner there, ratchet spanner. Um, anyway, there's nothing really that alarming about all this. It's more just a question that yeah, we found the leak, um, and just which way round do we repair it? Because I don't want it to leak again, really.
I've just, um, it's a very big diameter seal. So my, um, I've got a kit in the van for inserting bearings and seals, but I haven't got um, diameters big enough for that one actually, which is, which is surprising. But there we are. So I wouldn't have just found myself a, um, just a hole cutter actually. It's the same diameter as this in my van. And just, just tap it in. Well, I say tap it, you can hear me whacking it. But it's, um, and it's gone in nicely, and it's gone in square, and it's gone in evenly, which is what you need. So I've got to clean off the car. I used a flywheel as a little plate to put this down on. So I should have filmed that actually, I was just wasn't sure it's going to work or not. So uh, let me show you what I've done it. So I'm just using this as a diameter, putting it in that way. It was straight on top, and it's a nice fit. It's ever so slightly smaller than the diameter of this um, housing. And hit it centre, just gently take your time, check, take your time, check. Yeah, in, all good. Um, I've got a little, little hydraulic puller in the van, which I could have got out and set up as a kind of portable hydraulic press, which I've used for lots of little jobs. It works really well, actually, but I'll give it a try with what I've got, and it actually works, so that saved me setting that up. Okay. So I'm going to put just a little bead of grease on this um, lip here just to pre-lube the seal because I'm really not happy about the state of the end of the crank on the seal journal. It's For an engine this young I'm really surprised how aggressive that is. Um, anyway, nothing I can do about that. It's, it's, not, it's certainly not failed by any measure but um, important to keep an eye on that. I think I'll photograph it quickly so we've got a record of that. Gives these guys something to benchmark the works from. Um. Right, so I want to get to blue roll, please. So this little uh, copper gasket, which is actually a shin, uh, that'll be for the end float of the crank, I reckon. So I'll be very careful with this when it goes back in. To make, just giving it a little wipe, make sure there's no high spots on it, so it sits nice and flat because this shim is designed to have a certain thickness. I mean, I, that's what I suspect it is anyway. Just, I just imagine the thrust on the crank is at the ends, not the center, which is unusual for a Kubota engine, but here we are. Modern engines for you. So, yeah, right. I think we're ready to put the gasket and seal back in. One more quick wipe up just to check we haven't missed anything here. Make sure no guns or rubbish is... Can't see anything that shouldn't be in here. All looks clean, nice and clean. Nothing's escaped us without missing it, as far as I can see. But there you go, you're wrong. All right, look wrench.
All right, so what I was doing there is I'm working from the middle out because if you try to pull one side over only, you could pull it on, the, pull it off skew with, you know, unsquare, and it could warp this or hurt something or pull something away it shouldn't do from inside, damage things. So I'm working from the inside and keeping the torque balanced and then coming across, trying to keep it balanced and then working to the outside. So think of a spiral, you're working from the inside out to try and keep the, 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 the forces equal. If I had four hands, I could probably just do two bolts at the same time, but we're not doing that. Um, and then I, once I've done it, I like to go back over everything from, because once you've done one thing, you could interfere with it and it may be a bit of play. So that click is telling me I'm, I'm there. So I've checked it all, I'm happy. Now we can get putting things back together. Um, need to give the flywheel a clean up. Let's do that now. Okay. Right, I'll bring back in a minute. Right. Okay. Again, just doing them finger tight for now, just so they're all snuggly, snuggled up. Okay. Six. Now I just check them again. As I say, things can move, and then you can one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'm happy. Oi, oi, oi. Right. Again, with a torque wrench, always. Uh, Always undo the load on the spring detent because you can um, damage your uh, torque wrench and they're useful, very, very important, useful tools. Uh, let's just put these sockets back in for a minute. I'll just rest the uh, torque wrench on the engine for a sec. Right now, I'm just going to give the flywheel a little uh, rotation just to make sure that everything's in square and I'm going anti-clockwise because it's clockwise rotating engine. Um, I'm just having to fight the compression of each piston. Okay, I'm happy with that, that's fine. There's no issues there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to clean out the recess here for the um, or the register for the uh, drive plate because it's not um not as clean as I'd like it to be. So let's just give that a little clean. Yeah. Okay, we're not going hard because it's only cast if I look at it. That's a machine, not a machine. Now what? I'm going to use my. Uh, I think I've binned it now. I'll give myself a new razor blade out actually. Just to clean that. Oh, 
I'm a bit anal like this. I don't like um, leaving dirt on things. I think it's wrong. And uh, that concludes this job.